everyone? Sean Burrows with Team Federal. I've received enough questions. I figured it was time to talk about my Safariland ELS competition belt setup that I use in the 3-Gun. Now, ELS just means Equipment Locking System. It's the mechanism that holds all of this together, but more importantly, it makes it modular. And as the name indicates, it is a system, and how everything attaches is just as important as the belt itself. Now, the entire premise is the ability to easily and quickly mount, remove, or replace equipment. You've got a female component that goes on your belt, a male component that attaches to whatever you want to put on your belt, mag pouches, shotgun shell holders, anything else you can imagine. That all Safari Land products are compatible with the equipment locking system. And wherever you have these placed on your belt, it's as simple as sliding one into the other. Now the belt is made up of two components, an underbelt and an overbelt. The overbelt is what all the equipment is attached to. The underbelt, which attaches by hook and loop, is threaded through the user's belt loops, and then the overbelt is easily removed when the user is done doing whatever it is they're doing with their belt. Now there are two things that make this entire belt system genius in my opinion. One, when I have to change out my belt configuration from one competition stage to the next, because in 3-Gun, every single stage is different. I might be using two out of three, I might be using one, I might be using way more of one gun than another in all shotgun stage. I'm gonna take my pistol, all my mag pouches, all my rifle stuff off this belt and load it up with shotgun shell holders. So the ability to just remove all of the equipment that I have on it and quickly place what I want on it is a huge advantage. And I'm not sliding everything off just to get one thing here and then putting everything back on, which is what I used to do before I switched to the system. So on a generic competition belt such as this, and this is an outer belt, which has the, the hook and loop uh, going on, but I, I would still with this one have to slide everything off that I didn't want or if I wanted to change one thing here and then slide everything back on. The second part that makes this system so ingenious is the full contact that's allowed with the hook and loop connection with the underbelt. Why is that important? It might not be a big issue if you're just a pistol competitor or shooting another one gun sport, but when you're loaded up with two dozen shotgun shells, three pistol mags and a couple rifle mags and running around with your rifle and a full pistol on your belt, this gets heavy. It actually clamp on like this. This is a, a Safari Land one, uh, but you can clip them on. And that's better, so you can unclip what you don't want and then clamp on what you do. But the amount of surface area that was here that would attach to the underbelt is now diminished. So what would happen is, uh, you know, you get magazine, 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 shot shell holder, shot shell holder, rifle mag, and then you've got all this surface area here on the belt that's not in contact with your underbelt. Before I switched to the system, what I do to remedy that problem was I went and got some industrial Velcro and I put it on the inside of the clamps in order to get more contact with the hook and loop underbelt. But on really hot days when I'm running around, the glue or whatever it was that was making the industrial Velcro stick to the inside of the clamps would start to get gooey and melt and the belt would still slide off my waist because I have all this heavy lead and stuff hanging off of my belt. It gets gooey and it starts to slide and slip off and then you take your outer belt off and you'll find Velcro that's stuck to your underbelt and no longer stuck to the clamps and it's just a mess. But with the ELS system, that is obviously not a problem because I can just screw the female clips onto my belt. There is complete hook and loop contact on the inside and everything is held completely securely on the outside. As far as my default three gun setup on my ELS belt, it's pretty much the same every single time and it'll get me through probably 70% of the stages that I just show up to and then I add to and take away from this as needed. So I'm right handed, pistol goes on the right, I use a QLS clip to hold the pistol on so it's easily removable in case I don't need to use a pistol. It stays in the holster, I put it in my bag and when I'm ready to go on another stage, everything's ready and I can just clip it right on in. And I always have my belt buckle in the back, so behind my right hip, because that is the one place where I don't have any equipment on my belt. I'm using my gun with my right hand and I'm grabbing gear and loading my guns with my left hand. So everything is usually going from right to left. That's how I manipulate my guns. That's how I run my belt. As far as how it buckles, it's really simple. These two nubs go right into a couple holes that fit best. And then this little loop keeps the extra 
into the belt from coming loose. I have found though that the hook and loop contact all the way around is enough to hold everything on your belt. Not too long ago at a local match, I may or may not have forgotten my own belt at home. You look so cute, where's your belt? Well, I apparently left it at home. And I wound up having to use my wife's belt. The nice thing about an underbelt and these Velcro is I can wear even Alicia's belt. It looked funny because it only reached about three quarters of the way around my waist. You get around totally fits and it'll stay i can load shotgun still so but it kept my shotgun shells my magazines all on me while i ran the entire course of fire that really says something about the hook and loop system with the overbelt and the underbelt still in the game which actually brings me to another point a lot of people in three gun use the safari land els belt system and while there are other good products out there made by other companies it's really nice to be using the same belts and attachments as everyone else because if you say forget something or something breaks and you need to borrow equipment, it's really nice to be able to take your own gear and put it on someone else's belt or take your gear and just let them clip it on their belt without them having to use your entire rig, such as I was able to take my holster for my pistol, my shell holders that are angled for my hands and my arms, I load my shotgun, with my support hand. Alicia loads her shotgun with her strong hand. And so all her shell holders are angled in the exact opposite direction that I need in order to shoot a stage. What do I do? Quickly remove her shell holders, quickly put mine on, put her three quarters of a belt on my waist and go to work. Some belt setup concepts that I follow regularly are to set up and separate my shot shell holders. So I've got bird shot here and slugs here. Now, never have I ever just used two slugs. I'll at least have four. But just to show you, these 086 shot shell holders come in quantities of being able to hold two, four, six, which is actually three sets of two. I've never used that setup either. Eight, which is two sets of four, or the newest one is the 12. Now, I love the 12s. I used to use two sets of eights all the time, and I might not fill up both eights, but these are my favorite. So if I'm shooting an all shotgun stage or an all shotgun match, I have shot shell holders that go all the way around my belt at all sorts of different angles that are adjusted specifically to what angle my hand's gonna be at when I reach to that section of my belt. And when I'm loading my shotgun, I will always start from the furthest away and reach around to the last. So I always have an order in which I'm going. So in this case, maybe I would be starting a stage with slugs. And then I would go to loading birdshot because that's what the stage plan calls for. So another common set of practice that I employ is color coding my mags. In this case, I use gray MBX base pads for all my long range ammo, federal gold metal 77 grain SMKs, fantastic round, and then black for all my 55 grain close quarters paper stage uh, shooting. Speaking of long range rifle, often in three gun, we don't get to just sit at a bench and take our time. We have to be in awkward positions or go prone. And when I have a bunch of stuff on my belt, I wanna be as comfortable as possible. When I don't have to have something on my belt, I take it off. Now, these 086 shot shell holders will hold up just fine if you go prone on them. But again, I wanna be comfortable. So I can move everything to the side. Notice how I have my 086 shot shell arranged so I can grab it with my left hand. My left hand's gonna be hanging down at my side. So this is the angle that my hand's gonna be at when I grab my shot shells. The rifle's right behind it and I've got my pistol mag right here. Now this disturbed my pistol mag pouch setup, but this is what would be required for a particular course of fire. But again, you'll notice that there's nothing else on the belt. There would obviously be a pistol here if I have a pistol mag, but anything else that doesn't need to be on the belt doesn't go on the belt. So as you can see, this belt system is extremely diverse and useful for all sorts of setups within three gun. But also when I'm shooting specialty matches outside of my favorite sport, I don't go and get a new belt. This works just fine. If I'm shooting an all PCC match, I have mag holders and ELS clips set up just for my PCC setup. And I know exactly where on the belt I'm going to put my mags. Same with all shotgun matches. And this works great for USPSA pistol matches. So if you have any questions or requests, 
please leave them in the comments below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sean Burrows, and I will see you next time.